Welcome to the Introduction to Geographic Information Systems and Science Lecture Series developed by the Quinney College of Natural Resources at Utah State University. Discussion topics for this lecture include table relates and table joins. When we're talking about tables and databases, we have to discuss the topics of joining and relating tables. Now, joining and relating, we mentioned a moment ago, can be done with primary and foreign keys. And joins and relates can be done within a GIS using a relational database, but it can also be done using flat files. Joining is defined as appending the fields of one table to those of another through a common attribute. Join in a GIS is generally considered a permanent action. By permanent, we mean once the two tables are appended together, they cannot be easily separated and become one single table. A relate, on the other hand, is a table operation that establishes a temporary connection between records in two tables using a common field. Note that what's similar between these two actions is that we're using common fields or some sort of unique identifier between the fields that allows us to join or relate the fields or tables together. Now when you're working with GIS, it's often a question whether you should use a join or a relate. And it really depends on the data cardinality. Joining is often used when we have one record that has one relation or one record that has many relations. A relate is often used when you have many records that perhaps have one owner or one relation or many records that have many relations. Examples here are using a real estate example. On the left you have two joins where one parcel has one owner or one parcel has many owners and the relate example where many parcels have one owner or many parcels have many owners. It's important that we define cardinality as the correspondence or equivalency between sets. For example, if one row in a table is related to three rows in another table, the cardinality is one to many. So cardinality really refers to how tables are related based on their equivalency between sets. When we're discussing cardinality, there's four basic types, one to one. For each row in the destination table, there's one corresponding row in the source table many to one, where many rows in a destination table may correspond to one row in a source table, one to many, for each row in the destination table there are many corresponding rows in a source table, and lastly a many to many, where many rows in the destination table may correspond to many rows in the source table. As an example, let's look at this one to one join. Remember that with a join, tables are actually appended to one another, not just linked. In this example, we have two tables. On the left, we have a table that is associated with a spatial attribute data set. You can tell because it has an FID or a feature ID. In that table, we have owners, Samuel and John, and then we have another unique identifier called code. In the table on our right, we have a similar column called code, and we have a location. So perhaps these two tables would best be suited joined together so that we know the location of Samuel and the location of John. Using our common field, code, we can join these two tables together and we now have one table that has more useful information within that table and is connected to a feature ID which potentially allows us to display this data in a spatial format within a GIS. Speaking of a many to one join, with joins again the tables are appended to one another so we're taking two tables and making one. Note on the left we now have Samuel, John, and Alex. We still have our code. On the right, we have our code and location. In this case, the many to one is going to take the owners and join them to their locations. Note that we can have many owners within one location. The result of this table is that Samuel and Alex are both located in Logan, whereas John is located in San Diego. An example of a relate, we have a one to many operation. Remember that with relates, tables are not appended but a relationship is established. So rather than taking two tables and making one, we simply have two tables where we have a linkage between those tables so that we can see where relationships occur based on a common ID field. On the left we have a table that could represent a spatial data layer, note the FID, that identifies classes and code. Remember the code is our primary key or our key that will link to another table. On the right, we have a table that also has code, so our unique identifier between the two tables, a column of students, percentages, 
and a type column identifying the college those students attend. Using a relate, rather than creating one single resulting table, a link is established between these two similar fields called code. If we happen to be in our spatial data layer and we selected the Watts 1800 that had a code 1 and we had made a relate in the GIS to another table, it would select all of those rows within the grade and college table that had a code of 1. Another example of a relate where the tables are not appended but a relationship is established is a, using a many-to-many -many relationship. Note in this example on the left we have grade and college table with a code, student, and a college. And on the right we have a menu table with college and professor. In this example you can identify that our column field that we'll make our relate on. In this example, you can see that the common field with which we will make our relate is called college. You can have many students have many different professors within the same college. So as a summary of tables, tables are truly the bank of the GIS. All attribute data is stored within a table, and it's really where the power of the GIS is pulled from. Understanding the spatial data is critical but combining the spatial data with unique attributes of those spatial locations allows us to conduct analyses and better understand our world. Aside from the geographic features of spatial data, attribute tables really provide the data from which we can produce information using the GIS. Joins and relates allow us to combine and merge important attributes that would otherwise have no or missing context.